this is the best way to start a new game of Transport Fever 2 in 1850. Other similar tutorials don't show you what you need to do as time progresses in the game after the 1850s and that's useless because you must plan for the future in Transport Fever 2. So that's why you need to watch this video to the end to find out the best way to start a game sustainably which is also a lot more profitable in the long run. Generate a map. I've got a video covering all of the special hidden features for making the best possible map. So go watch that first and then come back and watch this. You want the best quality map as it's going to have to last you a long time so definitely check this video out first. Follow what I'm doing here because only 30% of vehicles are enabled by default in the game so definitely do this and turn 100% on. Enable all the DLC content like the deluxe pack and future proof your game by turning off vehicle despawning. If this is your first playthrough leave this off but if it's not turn on sandbox mode. This tool is really useful and making things look pretty. Okay now we're in set the speed to one quarter. Honestly this should just be the default speed it's just the right amount and I use it all the time 100%. Here's a big one that's often overlooked. Choose a capital city. This could be the biggest or the coolest looking. It's up to you, but it's essential for your playthrough. In this case, I've chosen Wallasey as it's nice and central in the map, but it's also the biggest city in the city list. So let's start making some huge revenue and it's super simple. There's two methods in Transport Fever 2 of making money, cargo and passengers. Now passengers are likely a cheaper setup costs as you can use an existing road network, but can sometimes be unreliable with passenger numbers. Cargo on the other hand is very reliable on numbers, but it has a much higher setup cost as it might need new roads and infrastructure. Just to prove I know what I'm talking about, I'm going to put it on hard mode, but you don't have to do this, I would recommend medium. For this reason, we're going to start with passenger routes and then invest the money we make from that into cargo, so you have a lifeline if the cargo goes wrong and you can retry without having to completely start a new save game. So go to the bottom right and select towns, sort by size and go to the biggest one. Build a bus stop in the central of industrial, residential and commercial. You can see which part of the town is which by going to the top left and selecting this option here. Bus stops are underneath the road. Now every single time you build some sort of station in Transport Fever 2, it needs to be in the best possible place in the cities, as this means that you can reuse, which means that you're only paying for the upkeep of one station, but multiple different lines can use it, which saves a lot of money in the long run. So now we're going to create a line, which is one on the keyboard. We're going to add two buses, which you can buy from a depot. And of course, we're going to name the line something memorable. Now on the other side of the road, we're going to add another bus stop and we're going to repeat what we just did, but the other way. This is really important because if someone wants to go one stop backwards on the route, it means they don't have to go around the whole route just to go back to where they want to go. They can just hop on a bus and go one stop backwards. So this is it for your early game commuter service. Now simply do this to all other towns in order of size. And for the lower 50% in size cities, only add one bus going each way down the route instead of two. Now if your capital started big like mine did by default, you can always add just one extra vehicle to the route and that can help out, but don't go any more than one or you'll be losing money. What you might be tempted to do is to add buses to just one side of the route. Like for example here, there's loads of people waiting to go out of residential and there's barely on anyone waiting to go the other way. Now don't do that because these guys are going to work or to the shops and these guys also need to get home. So they're gonna require buses to come and bring them back home, which is gonna be the other side. So you wanna have equal amounts on both sides of the road. Don't make that mistake. And now you're gonna have loads of money rolling through, but your cities are probably gonna to be too small for trains. So let's fix that and speed through the process as quickly as possible and get some trains rolling on. And for that, we're gonna need cargo. In Transport Fever 2, products grow cities. So we're gonna need some cargo. Let's do the basics. Now else where you may have heard to put road vehicle stops as far away as possible from the industry. Don't follow this advice, it's a speed running strategy and it isn't for playthroughs. You're just going to have to end up rebuilding later on, which is a pain in the arse, so don't do that. <laughs> so let's connect everything up and it's super simple. Now going to roads and then the streets, you can see that we've got all these different types of roads. We have streets and we have country roads. Now country roads are a little bit more expensive, this is 3,800 and a city road is 3,300, but actually the city road can go way slower than the small country road which goes double the speed limit compared to 20 and 40. We're going to do it in tiny little sections just so we can follow the terrain. So if we do one massive section just like that, you can see we start to get bridges and all this. It gets really expensive. We don't need that at all. So we're going to do it in tiny little sections just like this. Profits are calculated as the crow flies. So you want to try and make your roads as straight as possible to the destination. But don't go ahead and start destroying fields or climbing mountains to get there. If it's a, if it's a little bit of a detour, it's worth just going round. If you want to be really cost effective, avoid forests as well because they are actually slightly more expensive to go through a forest. And it also looks a little bit cooler if you're going for realism, but you know what? I don't care. We're going straight through the middle. <laughs> now the whole road network is now ready to go for industry. We're going to need some stops. And for that, go to buildings underneath the roads tab 
and go to a truck station. Make sure it's a truck station and not a bus or tram station. Now we're going to need one platform, but I'm actually going to leave two in and I'll show you why in just a sec and you should do the same. Ideally, you would put this stop right in front of the industry so it can be accessed from both sides with ease. But in this case, there's farmer's fields that are going to be expensive to remove and it's also on an incline, which is expensive to build. So we're going to build it just down here instead, as close by as possible, but nice and cheap. You can see over here, there's not much digging into the terrain, but over here, it's much, much worse. Only 77,000 versus 300,000. So let's place it down just about here. Perfect, now we're going to do the same for the rest of the industries. Over at the food processing plant, it's a slightly different story. Because we're not directly picking up anything here, we can actually use a truck unload stop. So if you want to save money in the short run, go for this. But at some point, we are going to have to pick up the bread. And for that reason, I'm just going to future proof and place the truck station. It's really not that more expensive, only 70k. Then we're going over to the coal, obviously, picking this up and then to the steel processing plant. Just double click on all of these stops and make sure the industry glows when you click them. If they don't glow, just replace the truck station and it means that your industry isn't connected. So you definitely wanna make sure it's connected otherwise the whole thing's not gonna work. We're gonna grab a new route. That's gonna go from picking up there, dropping off there, and then picking up at coal and dropping off there. Now here's the thing, we've got two platforms but only one being used. So let's do a really cool thing here. Let's go to each platform and we're gonna assign as an alternate platform number two. So they can now use both platforms to pick up and it makes traffic a whole lot better. For names, keep it very simple of industry because it gets complex later on. Now the whole map in the future is gonna tie into industry hubs which distribute. So you don't need to call it Woodbridge Food Steel, just call it Food and Steel. And then of course, Truck on the end. So we're gonna grab a new depot and we're going to grab some vehicles. Make sure you've got a cargo vehicle and not a passenger vehicle. 10 is always a fantastic number to start out with. It's what I always go with, so go for 10. There is a way of doing this properly to get the exact amount. 10 is a good starting place to go from there. You're going to notice on industry routes, the vehicles are going to clump up in one space, but eventually they will spread out, and that's where I've got it on a maximum speed with the developer settings. These vehicles are now much more spread out, and we can see there's absolutely loads of goods waiting to be transported over here. There is 237 pieces of coal, there is 127 bits of grain. We can get way more of these vehicles and be perfectly fine. There's a way to get the perfect number, but for now, let's get just about the right number. So we're gonna duplicate all of these to make it 20, and we'll see how that looks. That's not enough, another 10. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly increase this number until you get about right with the amount of products that are left sitting on the platform. And this is why alternate platforms are useful. They can get really hectic. Now, once you've increased the numbers of your vehicles up in units of 10, until about the point where there's no more products being picked up, you can see down here, not a whole lot going on. We're nearly out of products down here, so no more vehicles. So I've got about 100 vehicles on here, which is working out about right for products wise. We're getting pretty much everything delivered. There's barely anything left being made that's not being delivered. We are actually getting a choke point being made though. This junction is really not great for traffic. For that reason, it's a very easy fix. These guys are picking up the coal and then dropping off the steel mill. So once they've dropped off, we can make a diversion road that brings them down here and just away from that main junction, splitting the traffic up. And if it doesn't automatically do it like it has in here, go to the roads, because it is, I guess, slightly longer, and add a waypoint. And then in the route, you can then go after number four and add the waypoint in the route. And now they're gonna start using this road and it'll take the traffic away from this junction. There we go, perfect, it's working. Let's see how much money this route is making. Look at that, that is some hefty charts right there and some hefty profits. And of course, if possible, do this with boats because you actually have to pay for the maintenance of the road here. There's no roads with boats. Like, do boats if you can, definitely. But let's be honest, ships and road vehicles are kind of boring. If you're playing Transport Fever 2, you know I know you're here for the trains. I mean, who isn't in Transport Fever 2, right? So let's get to the trains. It's a little bit more complicated, so you're gonna have to pay attention. I'm gonna explain this as simple as possible for you. But before you do anything with trains, stop. You need to pay off your loan, otherwise you're gonna get in some serious trouble later on if your trains mess up. Pay this off immediately. It's a similar situation, so we're gonna look for a train route that is delivering things both ways, preferably. Not always possible, but we'll give it a try. Now, trains are slightly different from trucks and ships in the early game, because trucks and ships can hold pretty much every cargo in the game, whereas a train cannot. It can only hold specific cargo, and for that reason, when you're in 1850, you need to start out with fuel, or wood. So I'm going to go and look around the map for a good fuel or wood route. Corringham, you are beautiful. This crude can be taken up to this oil refinery by truck. It's not far enough to warrant a train. But then the oil can be transported down here to make fuel. Then we can go over here, pick up this crude, and that can be taken 
back over to the oil refinery. So that means two thirds of the route, 66%, is actually making money, which is more than enough money to keep this line afloat and make plenty of profit. Let's begin. We'll start at this crude place. We'll grab a cargo station. I recommend that you don't use the terminus station. Please use the cargo station because you can actually add extra tracks uh, coming out the other side which means you can double use it later on. You're saving more money, it's way more efficient. Plug it in. Of course, one thing I made sure is this route is nice and flat, so we're not going up any hills. The trains in 1850 are useless at hills. They can't do it, so no hills, guys. It must be flat. The next job is to connect it up. We're gonna do it in this fashion, just like this. Let's go, train tracks. Same thing again, we're going to keep it nice and flat following the terrain. If it helps, turn on the contour lines layer. It shows you where the hills are and you can follow the terrain a little bit more easy. So I wouldn't go up here because it's a hill, but you can follow the hill just like that. Now that's connected, we can then take the oil over to the fuel place. So we'll grab the track at the end here. That's going to then go over to the fuel place over there. So we'll keep a nice straight line if we can do. That's in and now connects the end back to the start. Line complete. Let's grab a new line that's gonna go from the beginning. It's gonna go to here, the oil, and then take the oil to the fuel, and then of course back to the start. Now let's grab a train depot. Let's use a Wild West style depot, which is by placing a depot down just like that against the track, and then at a right angle, and then connecting just like that, and from the start, just like that. Now in this depot, we're gonna grab a train. So when you open the depot, this is what you should be greeted with. You've got these three trains if you followed what I said at the start of the video. Now cargo wise, the best at hauling is the six wheeler, then the D13 and then the class V. It's very, very different for passenger usage though. Just thought I should put that out there. So let's grab the six wheeler and then for cargo, we're gonna add some tank cars. If you've done wood, then it'll be flat cars instead. We're gonna add as many tank cars as possible before it says pour down at the bottom here. Then when it says port, get rid of one, and we're gonna buy that. I don't quite have enough, so I'll take out a little bit of a loan here. When buying a train, make sure it's not longer than the shortest station. Our stations we placed are 160 meters, as shown at the bottom right. You can make this longer, but there's actually no point in the early game. There's just barely no point at all. Right, buy that. And now we got plenty of fuel rolling through the system. It's gonna take a couple of journeys around the whole loop just to get things actually starting to be produced because it does need the resources from the previous one to start producing. So therefore it will take just a minute to kick in. So you will lose a little bit of money. As you can see, I'm losing a fair bit of money down here, but it's gonna come back in, trust me. Now the oil refinery actually takes two pieces of crude for every piece of oil it makes. So it's a ratio of two to one. And for that reason, we need to double the amount of crude we're bringing into the oil refinery. So if you don't have any crude wells nearby, like I do here with this one, what you could do is you could do this sort of setup with a train. You could grab the train track and you could add passing points along the track, just a little bit like this. And then add signals on the passing points and then another train could use this route, but going back the other way. So picking up here and then going down here, and it will automatically use the passing point and wait for the other train to go past so there's no conflict. If it doesn't automatically go on here, by the way, select the signal as a thing on the route and it will do it for you. So that's how you do it with trains if the crude is far away. But in my case, we can actually get rid of this. So these trucks are actually only taking things one way. So 50% of the time, they haven't got anything on board, which is not ideal really. And they might just barely break even on hard mode. They're not gonna make much money. But while these guys don't make money, they are turning this crude oil into oil, which the train then takes away and that does make money. So we make it back on the train. We can actually add another train of the same type so long as we use signals. So if you place a signal down just before this junction, just before this junction, and the same over here just before this junction, we can then go to our train on the route, select it, manage vehicle and then clone vehicle and that is going to put another vehicle on the route coming out of the depot there you go which can then pick up the crude oil and help with the massive amount of quantity we're producing that needs to be transported and you can add pretty much as many of these trains as you want until the demand is filled so long as each time you add one of these signals at a reasonable distance apart every time on all of these tracks boom cloned three trains. And now you've got plenty of money rolling in, but before making a huge network, you're gonna first need to understand the basics of train hierarchy and the best way to set up trains as what we've done so far is just a really, really basic thing that's not gonna work long term. And that's why you need to watch this video that shows you everything you need to know.